good afternoon. Shalom. Hello, Young. Uh, live from Modi'in, Israel. And we're going to add a, another Israel report here for the, the time being and probably do two a week now. So uh, the best thing for people to do, I'll be putting it out on a newsletter, but the, the easiest way to keep up with this is to, of course, uh, subscribe to my YouTube or my Vimeo channel or Rumble or you know whatever else you can find out there. So Hanok, uh, tell us uh, a little bit about what your, what's life in Israel right now. Okay, uh, first of all, again, like the previous update, I'm not going to go and reiterate to the statistics. You yeah. can look on the IDF spokesperson's page and get all the latest information. What you might not pick up, uh, and we'll kind of you know go with the uh, the sort of harsher news first, is the city of Steyrot is uh, being evacuated. Mm. Um, it's not a mandatory one, but as our uh, armed forces prepare to enter Gaza, they want everybody as far away as possible. So that's never happened before. Wow. Uh, still looks a city of 9,000 people. And and let me just, let me insert here, Hanok, something I said last week on something I did. I can't remember how many I did last week. If a person does not have an Israel map on their wall, I'm not talking about a, a picture on your computer, a map on your wall of Israel, you need to order one uh, today. Get that on your wall so that when we, when these towns come out, when these, you can look at your wall and start to get familiar with uh, what's going on there. Right. Nice watch. Uh, uh, as I mentioned to you, and I just want to mention to our audience, um, I made a lot of notes for today. I still forgot a lot of things, I'm sure. But if you see me glancing down, I'm not thumbing through a graphic novel, you know, just, you know, because I'm boring myself. Okay. Um, hey, put your screen up just a little bit so we can see more of your, uh, your face there. You, it, like there you go. Yeah, it dropped okay. a little bit. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, maybe my face dropped. Uh, let me start off with the, what I find to be the heavy news. And then we can go into, and there's an enormous amount of things that people should smile about, be thrilled and be strengthened by. Um, the only day of the week that I have a real routine that's not a routine is Friday. Fridays, generally, I don't work because for me to go and guide, even in Jerusalem, I've got to get the last bus back. It just, yeah. so Friday's, Friday's a chill day for me. I get up after morning prayers. I go to the gym. I do a TRX suspension trainer class. I do some shopping. I do some cooking. I go online. It's a very chill day. It's not like that right now. In the local mall, which is a five minute walk from my apartment, um, Fridays is like a carnival. All these vendors are there selling prepared foods for Shabbat, and it has that carnival atmosphere. Fresh fruits and vegetables, you name it. Empty. Wow. 95 or more percent of the stores are not open. Uh, you only have a handful of stores. But this Friday was also very different. This Friday, I joined many residents of Modi'in to line the route of a motorcade of the family of a young chayelet, a young woman soldier who was being buried in Modi'in. Uh, Eden was 19 years old. And she fell defending our communities in the South. Now, pardon me, the body was already at the cemetery. So this is not like American style with a big hearse. In fact, I've never seen a hearse in Israel. Hmm. Um, it's the family. Yeah. So all these Israelis are standing on both sides of the road holding Israeli flags and, you know, or roses. And as one of the cars went by, they're going by very slowly. Judging by his age, 
I imagine that was her grandfather. And he's blowing kisses at us for what we're doing. You know, and for a moment, I said to myself, I cannot do this. Again, give me a riot to enter. Give me windows to break. Give me people to attack. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I can't do this. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, I have no right to say that. Now, if the world was fair and just, it would be the people my age that would be out there risking their lives so the young people can have theirs. But it doesn't work that way. Unbeknownst to me at that moment, Ayala in Jerusalem was doing the exact same thing with people in her neighborhood for another fallen soldier. Modi'in, my city, my only home in Israel for 14 years, has already had, and I apologize for losing count, eight to 10 soldiers that were killed, which is an enormously high amount for a city of 105,000 people. Modi'in has the highest rate of enlistment in the IDF. Now, some of our listeners are going to listen to that and say, wait a second, I thought you all had compulsory military service. We do and we don't. Yeah. Not everyone serves. And it's not just the majority of the ultra-Orthodox community, of which doesn't there is no ultra-Orthodox neighborhood in Modi'in. There is a city nearby, Modi'in elite, which means upper Modi'in, um, which is all Haredi, all ultra-Orthodox. But so other people, you know, they're they're extreme leftists or whatever it is that they don't serve or they get notes, you know, from the doctor that whatever. Anyway, so Modine is the highest rate of enlistment. Um, the towns next to Modine, which is it, my, my, my city is actually entitled Modine, Maccabim, Reut. Maccabim and Reut are two little villages that were settled by officers who were retiring from the IDF. So they were given this plot of land in the middle of what at the time was nowhere. Because again, Modian was only built 25 years ago, and we are on the border, on the so-called green line, with the southern part of Shamron. Modian is glued right up against Shamron, Samaria. So this is why we have so many people serving. Hmm. Okay. The spirit of Israelis is phenomenally high. It is shockingly high. It hmm. is, I cannot describe to an American truly what this is like. After 9 11 in New York City, there were a lot of American flags hanging and people were swearing that this would be different. I mean, it lasted for about 15 minutes. Yeah. As I have shared with you and others, the first thing they did around the Wall Street area was they put these large concrete planters to prevent truck bombers from coming in in the days right after the horrific terrorist attack. Well, by 2008, they had already removed them. Yeah. So people have a very short memory. So what do I mean? Okay. On these lists in Modi'in, people write, hey, I just, for any soldiers that are in the area, I just want to offer, if you've got laundry to do, bring it over, I'd be happy to do it for you. Then all of a sudden, these other posts begin popping up saying, yeah, I can do that too. Not only that, you know, like my, my you know, my grandmother's recipe for cheesecake, you know, you, you know, it's, it, you, you would love it. And and you know what? You you can come and shower here. You know, relax. You know, chill out a little bit. All over. People will post about young mothers with young children um, whose husbands were just called up. And people are offering to, I, I'll come over, you know, between 12 and 2 and play with your kids. I'll, you know, can I do some shopping for you? It is unbelievable. The constant 
things popping up saying, I'm baking 50 chalot, 50 chalas for soldiers. Um, who is in the area in the next two hours that could take it over to point X? Um, and then we have the same thing that you were dealing with, Mike. We have restaurants that are closing and just preparing an enormous amount of comfort food meals for our young soldiers. Um, and for those who can't volunteer, like, you know, I don't have a car, I can't drive anything anywhere. There's always the PayPal, excuse me, PayPal is in America, yeah. Paybox yeah. or Pay Bits, box. where you, as we found out, that that you can contribute to. So everyone can volunteer. Uh, I've also seen stories on I Facebook. I can't use that small, here. No, smaller communities um, where people are even volunteering in the local grocery stores just so, you know, they can, you know, people can buy food. Um, there are many stories, Haredim, ultra-Orthodox, who are having these big cookout grill things for our soldiers, you know, making hamburgers and all kinds of stuff, uh, tying tzitzit and giving them out to the soldiers, um, donating literally thousands of pairs of tefillin for any soldier who wants to put them on. The thing that really caught my eye, though, was in Tel Aviv. Now, let's pause mm -hmm. for a moment. Tel Aviv. Yeah, Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. There. Even, even, if, even if our listeners have not yet been to Israel, they've heard about Tel Aviv, our sin city. More than 100 restaurants who want to feed our soldiers. Now, to give food to the army, you have to be kosher. And again, let me clarify, most of our listeners do not know what that means. I'm not talking about biblically clean. I'm talking about kosher as we, the Jewish people, have observed it for 3,500 years. And I'm not just talking about separating meat and, 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 and milk products. I'm talking about these restaurants to get a temporary kashrut certification, temporary kosher license, literally that it's, they have to renew every week. They had to have their entire kitchen where, where the pots are boiled and it's unbelievable. And they had to close on Shabbat. More than 100 restaurants just so they can serve food to our young soldiers. I mean, it's, it's, it's staggering. It's staggering. Um, okay. This week, before Shabbat, a number of people, including our mutual friend Rifka Lambert Adler, put out a call that women, now she's talking to Christians, Messianic, Hebrew roots. She's not talking to a Jewish audience. Asking them to consider the possibility of lighting Shabbat candles this week in solidarity with their Jewish brothers and sisters. And I know personally that many, many, many did. I even helped circulate a prayer that was going around for people to say. Went all over. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that's, you know, people thought I wrote it, which, no, 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 this is real. This isn't something from Hanukkah's imagination. Never before in history has this happened. This is, we've spoken in the past a lot about a, a sort of separation, a, a line in the sand, to quote Josh Waller. Um, and all, you know, now more than ever before. And everyone here is talking about coming out of this stronger in a much safer Israel. And I, I saw a quote that just freaked me out. And it said, our enemies sought to cause us to shake with fear. 
but rather it has brought more Jews together in love in our country than ever before. And we're talking about a time which is arguably the low point in the history of the reborn modern state of Israel. Well, you know, when you're talking about that, Hanok, um, I've had numerous people that have through the last few days, you know, they know uh, many people that I know know I'm going on a tour and they're like, oh, well, I'm glad you, you know, you haven't got your tour. It, it's, you know, you don't want to be there now. And I'm like, I, I looked at them and said, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'd, I'd be there. Right. And they're like, what are you talking about? I said, in times of difficulty, that's when your friends show up and they just kind of stare at me. Um, we'll be making an announcement regarding the Connect Israel tour in just a couple days, actually, um, just to let people know it's not looking good, but we're on top of this. And Oak and I are talking about the alternatives already. Barry Phillips yeah. brought out a verse the other day, uh, Hanok, we haven't talked about this at all, but uh, could this be a possibility that we're going to be seeing some of these things happen? This is This is some of what's going on. In Isaiah chapter 11, um, I can't see the verse from here. I think it's it's kind of closer to the end. Um, I can't see the number. He will hoist a banner for the goyim, assemble the dispersed of Israel, and gather the scattered of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will cease. Those who harass Yehuda will be cut off. Ephraim will stop envying Yehuda, and Yehuda will stop provoking Ephraim. Uh, it goes on from there. Is, is this possibly uh, some of what is going on now in this, this uh, the the bringing together without strings attached to just begin to start to to talk and get to know each other and and support one another and and um, I don't know your thoughts. I would I would love to believe that. Yeah. Yeah. There's part of my heart that gravitates to that like a magnet. Yeah. And then there's the reality that I've experienced in the 10 plus years that I've been traveling to congregations across the U.S. that has given me a very different feeling. And I saw something on someone's Facebook post today. And it was a meme and it said, People who were truly grafted into God's people are mourning with us, not lecturing us. And it, it, it hurt because just a day ago, a friend of mine forwarded me um, messages that they were getting detailing every place in the Torah where Hashem tells us that if you do not act a certain way, you will be punished. In other words, they were describing this whole thing that our babies and children and our women and our elderly were being slaughtered in horrific manners as punishment. Yeah. And well, and so just what's interesting is still a lot of idiots out there. The the line is sharper than ever before. Mm -hmm. And for those who have ears and want to hear, and those who have a heart who want to love, Barry's 100% right yeah. that this is the time, this is the time to step forward and do it. But I like everything this is, else, we have, we have free yeah. will. We have I, choice. I think that this is revealing who is and who isn't um, by their by their actions, not by their words. Uh, you and I were part of a, a great, uh, um, uh, something we, we got to team up on. Um, I was last week on email, messenger, WhatsApp, and text all at the same time, as, as well as, uh, on, on websites, trying to figure something out. We were trying to get money for, uh, for the, uh, for meals over there. And the websites had taken down their English side, so there was no way for me to figure it out. And uh, my, I, I don't want to say, you know, don't don't take offense, but my last resort was Hanok, help me. <laughs> but uh, 
So I was in contact with a, a, someone in Israel that uh, speaks about as much English as I do Hebrew, which means we're not having much of a conversation. And uh, But it was through because of a friend of our mutual friend of ours that we were able to help this. And uh, you got to do something which was has always been fun for the two of us together is answering the question when you were talking to this person that uh, is part of this restaurant that we were able to actually raise the funds for 650 meals. Um, thank you to each person out there for your support yes. for it, it was it was amazing. Uh, but you were able to spend a little bit of time on the phone uh, answering the question, and, and who is this is giving what? So, you know, I, I, I've been down this road many times, and I've decided that keeping it closer to an elevator pitch, in other words, really simple, is so, you know, using the term messianic yeah is, is like is like you know nitroglycerin mm -hmm. dynamite so i have found individuals who are not jewish but truly with all their hearts love the torah observe it as best they can in the environments they live in have an unending love for the jewish people no strings attached and are willing to stand and die for the state of Israel. So you would think that every word that I was speaking to her was in Mandarin Chinese, because it was like, what? 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 And and again, coming to the the verse that Barry quoted. Never before in history has this occurred. Yes, there have been, I mean, you think of you think of truly saintly individuals like Cory Tenboom, Alea Shalom of Blessed Memory. I mean, yes, there, there are people who have sacrificed tremendously for the Jewish people. Not this many from literally all over the world. Again, as we've spoken, at the same time, it's revealing the true hearts and souls of other people who appeared till very recently to be the exact same. You know, in other words, they appeared to be leading groups or being part of groups that seemingly stood with Israel and the Jewish people, but didn't. I mean, you know, it, it's it's when when you asked me to help you with the site, and it was done in two installments as you got in more money. I'm adding up this money in my head, and I'm saying, I cannot believe that that many of our young soldiers. We'll have a nice warm meal because of the work of Mike Clayton and the amazing people that he has reached out to. It's, and it's, and most importantly, and most importantly, they've reached back. Yeah. This it, is it, not the first time you've ever taken a message, Mike, and gone out to people. Just a conduit. That's all it is. Well, you know, listen. Just it, 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 as someone I spoke to today was asking, so what can I do to help? Yeah. And I said, I'm going to send you a bunch of links. And I don't want you to simply pass on the links to people. Like, for instance, the Friends of the IDF, they have a matching grant program right now. There's uh, an Israeli-born billionaire, Chaim Saban, uh, who was involved in a lot of different businesses. By the way, he's the media guy that created the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers a number of years ago. I mean, you know, if, if, if for any of our listeners mm -hmm. who have children, let's say, in their 30s, you certainly watched 
the Power Rangers. Of course you did. I know I did. I, anyway. Sorry, I anyway. did Okay. Well, let's, hey, listen, one day, you know, we'll, 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 uh, next time I'm in North Carolina, we'll sit and we'll watch there uh, you go. reruns. But, but Probably anyway, not. he was offering a matching grant. So for every dollar that you contribute, he contributed a, a dollar, okay. up, but the, up to a limit of a million. If you gave more than a million, he couldn't match it. Is that unbelievable? But anyway, yeah, but we I don't want him going people, broke. I said to these people, I said, don't just send this to the five people you're closest with. Everyone that you send this to, you tell them that they've been mobilized and they've got to reach out to members of their family and their friends. Anyone who's ever said anything favorable about Israel or, gee, what, you know, what is, what's going on in Israel, you get to them. So all of a sudden, we're multiplying our efforts and our ability to help fund the horrific humanitarian needs. I mean, th those people who were able to survive the massacre last Shabbat have nothing, have nothing. Well, you know, let me give you two stories and I've got a commercial for uh, uh, something I want to do, uh, we need to, to be involved in. Uh, I, I end up, I mean, I, I really have, have prayed about this uh, in the last week of, of not playing golf in the morning. And uh, I just was like, you know, I need to be out there telling people. And I walked into the pro shop the other day and a bunch of guys were like, okay, Mike, tell us what's going on. And so I got to stand there with a bunch of guys that are, a lot of, most of them are very secular and, uh, and explain. And, and there was 100% support. We have guys that are, they're left, right, center, and, yeah. you know, don't know if, if who is, who is what, um, they, they were asking. And so they, you know, they knew that I was taking money up and, uh, the other morning I got there and, uh, one of the guys said, Hey, you know, I, I couldn't get on PayPal last night. So, uh, you know, but I want to donate. And uh, I said, well, you know, I can do cash and I can just, can, you know, take it to my bank and get it there. And so he opens his wallet. Another guy says, Hey, wh what are you doing? And, uh, so this guy started talking to him. Well, he starts opening his wallet. You know, it's just, you never know. But the the best story that I have to say, tell you is about a couple of, and if I get through this today, it'll be, I couldn't do it yesterday. I had to let their dad tell the story. Two young boys who, you know, about 10 and eight years old, have been for the last year saving money to buy an Xbox. After watching the update last week, they came to their mom and dad a couple of days later and said, we'd like to take that money and send it to Israel. Mom and dad said, are you sure about this? And they said, we've been talking about it for two days. I hadn't talked to their mom and dad. No. They've been talking Each about other. it. For two days, they said, yes, we want to send this money. I send that to a friend of mine in Israel, another different friend. I have more than one besides you. And uh, I sent it to a friend of mine. He says, you know, I was talking to some people around me and told the story. And, and he, he said, we're all in agreement. Tell them to just, you know, thank you. But, but you know, go buy your Xbox and, uh, you know, just just, you know, thank you. And I said to this friend, I said, no, you don't know these two boys. I'm not about to do that. No. And um, the congregation yesterday, one of them walked up to me and handed me an envelope with $150 in it. If they're supposed to have an Xbox, Hanok, Hashem will give them an Xbox. But that's I, the generation that we're that's yeah. coming along right now. Um yeah, I made it. I was also wow. a part of a call yesterday, Hanok. Um it was Shabbat, but I, I it was this was important. I got on a Zoom yesterday. I cannot give all the details. But I was with a lot of people on that call that are way above my pay grade. 
and um, there is a project that's been been started by Hyavel. Uh, I think most of our listeners are probably familiar with Hyavel, and it is called Project Itai. Uh, Itai was a foreigner. That is, David was fleeing from Absalom. Uh, he had just been a part of this. He had just come in, and and David says to him, "You can read this in for in Second Samuel 15. Um, you know, you're you're a foreigner and in exile with us. You only arrived yesterday. Um, you know, basically, he was. He's David looked at him and said, "You just got here, man. You you know, you're a newbie, and you're not even part of the nation of Israel. So why don't you go back home?" And Etai said. Uh, this as Hashem lives and as my Lord the King lives wherever my Lord the King may be whether for death or for life your servant will be there too and David said go move along this is Project Etai that's begun to help those in Judea Samaria I'm not I'm not at liberty to give a lot of details on this because of security issues. I can tell you, and I'm announcing this for the first time online, that um, we are diverting funds as best we can that have already come in. Some of the funds uh, we will be giving to this project. Um, but there's no reason for people to give to me and we pay a, a fee and then they then I turn around and give it to them and got to pay a credit card fee and all that kind of stuff. So this is not about me. I don't need my name and lights anywhere. I've had that before. It doesn't last long. It doesn't really look good. Uh, if people would like to go to Hyavel, uh, Hyavel.com, and I'll, I'll put the link at the end of this also, there's a banner up at the top that says support. For the uh, the communities, that is Project uh, Itai, and then go to there. Um, if there's anyone in this world that I trust with my money, it is the Waller family. Yeah. They will give everything that they have, and the, the need is great. The good news is we don't need thirty million; we only need twenty nine. Yeah. So, no big deal. Uh, there's, as, as of this morning, there's close to $2 million that's been raised. So yeah. if people would give, they can do monthly. Um, but, uh, you know, we're still, we're still taking funds. I'm still sending things. I have other projects in Israel. I'm not shutting down everything. Uh, I've got all kinds of things going on, but, uh, this, this is where if, if people want to, can make a difference there. Uh, and maybe they want to go around their, you know, go to their friends, their community, their church, their, 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 you know, at the dog park and, uh, and, and see what you, you never know who might've just had an inheritance and, uh, is looking for a place to give some money. You never know. I, um, go ahead. I'm, so, I'm done. I'm sorry. That's okay. People that people that we know that I've been contacting and and it's basically like every other day, every third day. And said to me, Hanoch, we know you. Where are you getting the money from? You're not e you're not going to be able to work for months. So I said, people are sending me money, and I I can do with less. We have to take care of things. There's one other thing I want to mention on the serious note, because everyone asks, and I've been getting a lot of notes about this. What's going on with North with the North? What's going on with Hezbollah? What's going on with the Iranian troops, etc., in Syria? And it's a very fluid situation. They keep testing, they send drones, they fire an anti-tank missile. I was in a taxi the other day. I had to go to my accountant and drop off all this tax information. You you would think they would let us slide, you know in the middle but no you know remember the you know the two things you can always count on death and taxes so yeah for sure anyway so i'm in a taxi taxi drivers in israel are amazing because it does take much to get them to talk and he brought up an interesting point when we we're discussing the north he said everyone here is afraid because of how powerful he is he said however understand something 
we know that war there is inevitable. It may not be now, it may be in a year, it may be in two years, we know it's inevitable. We know that. Yeah, my, my phone just dinged also. Um, here it goes again. He said, but understand something. He said, we are in a state of full mobilization. We are on the highest alert possible. Whatever element of surprise they would have had is long gone. He said, if we have to have this war, we're prepared as a society. And I have never spoken to as many Israelis. I, I mean, I've been initiating conversations in the supermarket and, you know, with the people that live downstairs and anyone I run into and everyone is let's finish this thing in Gaza. Now, do I believe the American government will allow us to do that? No. Um, and but please, anyway. you know, I love those memes that say take back Gaza. Ain't going to happen, guys. Yeah. Not going to happen. So anyway. Uh, final thoughts, Mike? Yeah, the only thing I have is I had to text my wife because she's not home right now. She's in visiting her sister because uh, I have Eddie Chumney here with me for the week. So he's enduring my cooking. Um, it's been some interesting conversations, believe me. But uh, I don't know, I, I, people download Red Alert. Um, you can hear these uh, these the rockets. I post on Facebook a webcam of Gaza uh, link for the the webcam there. They have usually three to usually four different views. There's things you can do. Donate when you can. But uh, Honok, it just uh, my phone just went off a minute ago as we are at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Um, we, you know what that means. So maybe we could join together uh, this sure. morning. Sure. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevo Malkuto, Leolam Vayed, Shalom Yerushalayim. May peace come soon. Just one last quick thing before we sign out. People ask me all the time, you know, how are you doing? Are you scared? No, I'm not scared. I, I, my heart is broken for the suffering of my people. My patience and it seems so incongruous for me to use the word that I have none of. Um, the way I view people that I've dealt with, I mean, you have to remember in the last 10 years, I've spoken to a lot of congregations. I'm wondering where the heck these people are at. With everything going on, there's no place on earth that I would rather be right now than here in Israel. And there's probably no place i'd rather be than standing next to you but that's not possible right now till next time buddy all righty shalom take care bye-bye